Good morning, sixth grade. Today we're going to start on chapter 11, lesson two. This is Rome as a Republic. Lesson two, Rome as a Republic. It matters because Rome's ideas about democracy would greatly influence the people who founded the United States many centuries later. Governing Rome. Guiding question. How did conflict between classes change Rome's government? Not everyone was treated fairly in the Roman Republic. Rome's government reflected divisions within its society. Early Romans were divided into two classes, patricians and plebeians. The patricians were Rome's ruling class. Patricians were wealthy landowners. They came from Rome's oldest and most prominent families. Most Romans, however, were plebeians. Plebeians were not as wealthy as the patricians. In some cases, they were very poor. Plebeians included artisans, shopkeepers, and owners of small farms. Patrician and plebeian men were Roman citizens and had the right to vote. Both groups were required to pay taxes and serve in the army. Plebeians, however, had a lower social position than the patricians. For example, it was illegal for a patrician and a plebeian to marry each other. Plebeians also lacked important basic rights. They could not hold public office or lead the public ceremonies that honored the gods of Rome. Rome's republic would be shaped by a struggle between the patricians and the plebeians over the right to govern. Government of the Republic The government of the Roman Republic was organized into three branches. One branch made laws, another ran the daily affairs of government, a third branch acted as judges. The Republic had a system of checks and balances. This system was designed to prevent one branch from becoming too strong. It did not separate powers like the United States government does today, however. Judges helped run the government and could lead armies. Some leaders who ran the government also helped make laws. Two patrician consuls headed the government. The consuls were administrators and army leaders. Each consul served one year in office. Their terms of office were short so that they would not become too powerful. Each consul could veto or reject the other's decision. The word veto is Latin for I forbid. Rome also had other major government officials called praetors. They interpreted the law and served as judges in court. They could also lead armies. The Senate was Rome's legislature. The Senate was a group of 300 patrician men. These senators served the Republic for life. During the early Republic, the Senate only advised the consuls. By the 200s BC, however, senators debated foreign policy, proposed laws, and approved the construction of roads and temples. The Assembly of Centuries was another legislative body in Rome. It elected consuls and praetors and passed laws. The Assembly of Centuries was, like the Senate, controlled by patricians. Conflict between classes. As time passed, the plebeians grew frustrated. They had to serve in the army and pay taxes, yet they had no power in the government. In 494 BC, many plebeians went on strike, refusing to fight in the army. They even left Rome to create a government of their own. The patricians feared that the Republic was in danger of collapsing, so they agreed to share power with the plebeians. All right, so you can see here there's a picture um, and it's showing the plebeians on strike to gain a voice in their government. Um, that's showing that it turned violent. So the Romans and the plebeians were on at least five strikes in order to establish their rights. So they were striking and refusing to fight in the armies. The patricians allowed the plebeians to have their own body of representatives called the Council of the Plebes. The Council of the Plebes elected officials called tribunes Tribunes voiced plebeian concerns to the government. Tribunes could also veto government decisions. 
Later, plebeians were even allowed to become consuls, and marriages between plebeians and patricians were made legal. In 287 BC, the plebeians won another important political victory. The Council of the Plebes was given the right to pass laws for all Romans. Politically, all male citizens were now considered equal. In practice, however, a few wealthy patrician families still held most of the power. Women did not have any political rights. The Roman Republic had become more representative, but it was still not democratic. Cincinnatus and Civic Duty The Romans believed that there were times when the Republic needed a strong leader. To lead Rome, the Romans created the office of dictator. Today, this word is used to describe an oppressive ruler who has total control over a country. In the Roman Republic, however, the consuls resigned during difficult or dangerous times and the Senate appointed a dictator to lead the Republic. During a crisis, the dictator had complete control over Rome. After the crisis was over, the dictator was expected to give up his power, and the regular government's power would then be restored. One of the most famous Roman dictators was Cincinnatus. Cincinnatus had been a respected Roman consul, who was known for his loyalty to Rome. In 458 BC, a powerful enemy of Rome threatened to destroy the Roman army. The Senate appointed Cincinnatus as dictator to handle this emergency. Messengers were sent to his farm to tell him about his appointment. They found him plowing his fields. Cincinnatus accepted the role of dictator and he immediately created an army. Then he led it into battle, easily defeating the enemy. Next, Cincinnatus marched his army back to Rome and resigned as dictator. Just 16 days after taking control of the Republic, Cincinnatus returned to his farm. Cincinnatus was widely admired because he fulfilled his civic duty. Civic duty is the idea that citizens have a responsibility to help their country. This idea was important to the Romans and has been valued by other people as well. George Washington, for example, was inspired by Cincinnatus. Like Cincinnatus, Washington was a farmer who was asked to lead an army, the Continental Army in the American War for Independence. After leading the Americans to victory, Washington returned to his farm in Virginia. Later, he reluctantly agreed to become the first president of the United States. Rome's System of Law one of Rome's greatest contributions to later civilizations was its system of law. Roman law has influenced the legal systems of the United States and other countries. At first, Roman laws were not written down. This sparked criticism from the plebeians. They believed that patrician judges would always rule in favor of the upper classes if there were no written laws. The plebeians demanded that laws be put into writing. Thus, the judges would have to refer to the laws when they made a legal decision. The patricians eventually agreed. In 451 BC, Rome adopted its first written code of laws known as the Twelve Tables. The laws were carved on twelve bronze tablets and placed in Rome's marketplace called the Forum. These laws served as the foundation for all future Roman laws. The Twelve Tables supported the ideal that all free citizens, patrician and plebeian alike, had the right to be treated equally in the Roman legal system. As the Romans conquered more people, they expanded their system of laws. They created laws that would apply to people who were not Roman citizens. These new laws were known as the Law of Nations. The Law of Nations identified the laws and rights that applied to all people everywhere in the Roman lands. Roman Justice The ideas found in Roman laws are woven throughout the American legal system today. For example, the American legal system, like the Roman legal system, assumes that a person is innocent until proven guilty. People accused of crimes have the right to defend themselves before a judge. Judges must carefully consider all the evidence in a case before making a decision. The rule of law is one of the key ideas that the Romans passed on to the world.
The rule of law means that laws apply to everyone equally. It also means that the legal system should treat everyone the same way. Before the Romans, the rule of law was unfamiliar to people. In many regions, people of the upper classes enjoyed special privileges. They often had different laws and courts from the lower classes. People in the lower classes, however, had few legal rights or none at all. The Romans extended the idea of the rule of law to all their lands. Today, the rule of law is the guiding principle of the American legal system. All right, we have the picture over here that shows the Roman court system shared many similarities with the legal system in the United States today. So again, um, everybody's um, innocent until proven guilty. Uh, there was a judge, there's a jury. So a lot of that um, stems from, from the legal system of the Romans where um, the laws apply to everyone equally. It doesn't matter whether you're um, upper class or lower class, the laws are the laws.